Hello, David Snowpack here from Snowpack Games, and this is just a short video about getting started with RenderDoc and Godot. As I've mentioned before, I am not a rendering expert. Rendering is actually one of my weaker areas. But recently, on my game dev live streams, we've been trying to optimize this VR voxel builder game that I'm working on. And rather than just guessing or assuming what the graphics card is doing, I decided to check out RenderDoc, which is a graphics debugger that sort of injects itself into the graphics API like OpenGL or Vulkan or DirectX or whatever, and can log everything that happens in a given frame and then allow you to drill into that data. It's open source and free and works on Windows and Linux and some other platforms, and I am seriously falling in love with it. It is so cool. So let me just give you a super quick introduction and a teeny tiny taste of what it can do. When you load up RenderDoc, you'll see a bunch of tabs over here, probably a different bunch of tabs than what I have here because it just opens up the same tabs that you had open the last time you're using it. But one of them is probably this launch application tab. If you don't see it, you can go to window and then launch application. This is the way you open up any of the other tabs that you don't have open currently. So I'm going to load my last settings. Uh, you want to put the path to Godot on your computer in executable path, the path to your project in working directory, and if you want to load just a specific scene rather than the whole game, you can put that in command line arguments. So let's launch this. This is just a little test app that I was using to test out a custom shader and see what it was doing to compare it with a different custom shader to try and see if there was a performance difference. Anyway, you'll see that RenderDoc adds this overlay up here. It says, uh, you know, F12 or print screen to capture. I'm going to press print screen. And now it says one captures saved. It saved uh, the data for a particular frame. So I'm going to close my game. Uh, and then it loads up the data that it captured. So the first thing we're going to check out is we're going to go to Window and Statistics Viewer. You can see that there are only 12 draw calls, 227 API calls. Uh, it's using 241 megs of VRAM. Anyway, the most important thing is probably the number of draw calls. You can then go over to the event browser over here, which shows all of those draw calls. Um, and if you press the little clock up here, it will tell you in microseconds how much time each of those draw calls took. So you could look for a particularly slow draw call and see if maybe there's something you could do to optimize that. If you click on a particular draw call, down here in the API inspector, it will show all of the OpenGL uh, API calls that went into setting up the state for that draw call. And something that's really cool, if you go to the texture viewer, and you click on a particular draw call, it will actually show you over here what was drawn in that draw call. So you can see this first one draws the uh, blue cube, the next one draws the green cube, the next one draws the yellow cube, this one draws the red cube, and this last one here draws the purple cube. And you'll notice the colors are a little faded. That's because at this point in the pipeline here, uh, all of the colors are still in linear space. Uh, later, I think it's this, no, uh, da, 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 da. this draw call, <laughs> or this one actually, so GL draw arrays, uh, this one uh, actually converts it from linear color space to sRGB for display. Uh, that's Godot doing that uh, when it's rendering normally, but uh, when you're looking at it over here, you can actually click this little gamma icon and have it convert it from linear to sRGB just so that when you're inspecting things, you can see it a little better. Anyway, uh, let's pick a draw call uh, down here. Uh, actually, let's go to the first one because that loads the full state. So um, the way this kind of works, at least appears to work, <laughs> is that Godot is grouping uh, the draw calls by material. So all of the uh, draw calls that use the same material, it kind of does them together so it can avoid changing the state too often. Uh, so in the first one, it's setting up the full state uh, for this material. And then in these subsequent ones for the same material, it's doing a lot less over here. So anyway, we go to the first one. We'll see that we are using this program 542. If I click that, uh, here's some information about it. You can see that it's made up of two shaders, like all programs are in OpenGL, the first one being the vertex shader, the second being the fragment shader. If I click the fragment shader and then click view contents, it will actually show me the GLSL source for this shader. Um, 
you'll see there's a whole bunch of extra stuff in here that isn't part of the custom shader that I wrote. That's because Godot has its own custom uh, shader language, which gets turned into GLSL, and a whole bunch of other stuff gets uh, crammed in there from Godot. Uh, but you can actually go through here and find the bit that is your shader converted to GLSL. And I haven't done this, but it is my understanding that you can actually change the shader and then have it re-render to the texture viewer so that you can test changes to your shader directly in RenderDoc, uh, which seems really cool. I'm very much looking forward to, to trying that. Um, but there's just so much cool stuff in here. Uh, there's a mesh viewer, which will actually look, let you look at the vertex data that was submitted. This is just so cool. I am very much looking forward to using this during my optimization process so that I can get a better idea of what is actually happening and not just guess about it. There is so much more here to learn, so please go check it out yourself. I'm sure there are a whole bunch of more advanced tutorials out there on the internet. I just wanted to, to quick show you this and, and just tell you how excited I am about it. So thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.